Okay, let's continue our discussion. Um, we are now in homeostasis. So, last meeting, we have discussed about the different um, organ system. I, I, introduced it, I, I introduced you to the different organ system. And last, last time, we discussed about the introduction in anatomy and physiology and the hierarchy of life. Okay, so now let's move on to our new lesson, which is the homeostasis. Um, can you um, remember what's called blooded animals? Those are animals na pag pumunta sila sa malamig na lugar, pati yung body temperature nila, nila nagiging malamig din. Okay, parang naglo-lower yung body temperature nila. Pag pumunta naman sila sa mainit na lugar, uh, nagiging mainit din yung katawan nila. Okay, their body temperature changes according to the environment. Okay, now that's different in humans. Okay, we humans, um, we have this body temperature na minimaintain ng ating katawan that if yung body temperature natin nag-lower or tumaas dyan sa ating normal body temperature is hindi siya tama. Okay? Meaning, there's something wrong with us. It's because we maintain a homeostasis. Okay? We are warm-blooded animals. Okay? So, um, homeostasis is a stable internal environment and that is something that is maintaining by our body. Every organism must maintain homeostasis for survival. Um, homeostatic regulation is responsible for keeping internal environment within certain limits. Now, every time na nafeel ng katawan natin na something is not good in our environment that causes our let's say for example temperature to rise so it it does something na mag papa baba ng temperature natin and uh, vice versa pag mababa yung temperature natin our body does something na magpapataas ng temperature natin para ma-maintain yung uh, body temperature na kailangan lang natin na normal sa atin there are two general points within homeostasis. Let's have first the auto-regulation or intrinsic regulation. This results when cells or organs or, or organ system adjusts its activity automatically. Example nito is your circulatory system. Okay? Um, your circulatory system maintains a blood flow. Okay? Pag, pag may nagbago dyan, your organs your organs in your circulatory system does something to bring back the natural blood flow of your circulatory system or in your circulatory system okay that's auto regulation or intrinsic regulation um, while extrinsic regulation it's a result or results from activity of nervous system or endocrine system okay it's something that is controlled by our nervous system or our endocrine and our endocrine system not the organ itself okay so my uh, my involvement ng nervous system or the di kaya endocrine system homeostatic regulation involves um a homeostatic regulatory mechanism consists of a receptor or it senses an environmental change or stimuli. Yung nagre-receive ng information, okay? Or yung nagpa-perceive from the environment, okay? It's, it's just stimuli, diba? It's uh, something that causes... Um, reaction okay or change and a control center or the one that processes information supplied by receptor and generates a response or our nervous system especially our 
um, central nervous system or spinal cord and our brain. Those are the control system. Okay, from perceiving, from perception, as if, for example, from your sense of sight, nakita mo, then naisip mo, pernasas ng brain mo, okay, yun yun, a receptor and a control center. Now, let's move on to the third one, an effector, okay, effector, an organ or cell that responds to the command of the control system. From your sense of sight, from your eyes, what your eyes have perceived to your brain and then to your affector let's say for example your muscles, your hand your foot or your feet yung mag-release ng reaction or response na magkikreate or i-deliver ng central or control, control center mo yung information na uh, nilabas ni brain or ni spinal cord para gawing respond to that specific stimuli. Okay? Kasi for example, na, tumatawid ka, tapos nakita mo may track na parating mabilis. Okay? So, inisip mo, baka ka ma ma sagasaan. So, as a response, tumakbo ka ng mabilis. Okay? That's it. The effector now is in motion na. A variation outside the desired range triggers an automatic response to correct the situation. This is a negative feedback. Um, when you say negative feedback, uh, for example natin dito is the control of body temperature. Okay. Homeostasis should be a normal body temperature. Okay? Now, um, your normal temperature was disturbed. Okay? St your stimulus is rising body temperature. Na umiinit yung, yung body temperature mo. Baka may lagnat ka or baka mainit lang talaga yung yung lugar so temperature sensors in skin and hypothalamus sila yung receptors mo sila yung magre-receive ng stimuli na mainit or umiinit yung body temperature mo or tumataas yung body temperature mo now it will be sent the information will be sent by the receptors to your central control center or your brain now um, thermoregulatory center in hypothalamus will now um, process the information and will now regulate your temperature and it will this that information and or command from the hypothalamus will be sent now to your affectors what are your affectors as ano yung mag react Ito sila, sweat glands in skin will increase secretion. Okay? So, ito na yung pagpapawisan ka na. And another one, blood vessels in skin will dilate. Okay? Lalaki sila. Okay? I mean, um, magsishrink okay? yung mga blood vessels mo para hindi ka magkaroon ng para ma maibsan yung uh, init okay now in response increase heat loss through evaporation because of your um, secretion increase sec secretion through radiation and then your normal temperature will be restored so, na-achieve mo na naman yung normal body temperature mo. And, that's a cycle. Okay? Now, let's have positive feedback. Example of this is your blood clotting. Now, the point in negative feedback is that um, merong ginagawa yung body mo or yung system mo na 
nagsusupress or nagpap, nagbabalik. Okay? Let's say, for example, from high temperature, ibabalik niya to the normal. Okay? Parang, parang, parang binabara niya. Okay? Yung nangyayari sa katawan mo para bumalik. But, in positive feedback, uh, dinadagdagan pa niya. Okay? Kung, uh, okay, let's discuss this first. Let's say, for example, your blood clotting is a, an example of positive feedback. Um, break in blood vessel walls causes bleeding. Okay? So, got. Damaged cells release chemicals and clotting begins. Okay? Now, additional chemical released and clotting accelerate. And because of this, this additional clotting or release of chemicals, it will result to blood clot plugs break in vessel wall and bleeding stops. Okay? Because of additional blood clotting, okay, nag-stop yung bleeding. Okay? And that saved you from losing more blood. That's positive feedback. Okay? Kung baga, maalat na nga, inasinan mo pa. Okay? While in negative feedback, yung maalat, binuhusan mo ng maraming tubig para hindi na siya maalat. Okay? In positive feedback, in initial stimulus, uh, produces a response that enhances the change in the original condition. Damage to blood vessel wall will cause release of chemicals. Chemicals will tri trigger blood clotting. Clotting process increases release of chemicals. And more chemical means accelerated clotting. Okay? Ba bakit kailangan accelerated clotting? Kasi, para mat ma ma-prevent na yung more blood loss. Okay? Now, let's move on to our um, body cavities. Body cavities are internal chambers holding vital organs. Cavities, um, um, parang ano ito? Parang ano ito sila? Uh, lalagyan sa loob ng katawan mo. Okay? Para silang, kung sa motor, yung... Yung U-box, di ba? Merong lalagyan sa apuan ng motor. Yung U-box. Pag may ilalagay ka na bawal matapon or bawal ma maipit, dun mo ilalagay. Or bawag, bawal makalog-kalog, dun mo ilalagay. Parang yun yung body cavities natin. So, cavities protect vital organs. And cavities allow organs to change in shape, okay, and size. Now, we have two uh, body cavities. The dorsal body cavity, which includes the cranial cavity and spinal cavity. Okay? Ito yung sa skull natin. Ito naman yung sa spinal cord natin. Uh, and the ventral body, body cavity includes the thoracic cavity and the abdominopelvic cavity. So, here's... Um, the illustration. This is your cranial cavity and your spinal cavity. This is our first um, first of our two body cavities. The so, dorsal and spinal cord or spinal cavity. And we have here our thoracic thoracic cavity which includes the pleural or pleural cavity and the pericardial cavity obviously our pericardial cavity has our heart okay and then we have here the abdominal pelvic cavity which involves our abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity.
The thoracic cavity contains the heart and lungs. The, the thoracic cavity is subdivided into the left and right pleural cavities, which pleural cavity contains one lung and lined by the visceral and pari parietal pleura. Um, the mediastinum contains the pericardium or the pericardial cavity and another serous uh, membrane that surrounds the heart. And the abdominal, abdominal pelvic cavity is lined by the peritor, peritoneum. You will discuss this in your um, in-depth um, discussion in our every organ system. The dom abdominal cavity extends from diaphragm to the superior margins of the pelvis. It has or inside it is the liver, stomach, spleen, and most of the large intestine. And finally, the pelvic cavity is bordered or bordered by the pelvis with a floor of muscle. Reproductive organs, ur urinary bladder and spinal cord or spi uh, and the final portion of the large intestine are located in the pelvic cavity. Now let's move on to the um, clinical technology that allows many different views of the body. These this are um, used in our exams right when we are having a checkup in a hospital we have here x-ray x-ray computerized tomography scan or the ct scan magnetic resonance imaging scans or R mri ultrasound images spiral ct scan digital subtraction angiography image and positron emission topography tomography scans so here's the picture and here is our um, expected learning in our previous and today's discussion okay that's all. See you next meeting.